While doing your summer assignment this year, you had a quick review of all the various phases of matter and talked about the various phase changes, from melting to freezing, boiling, condensing, and even sublimation and deposition. I want to spend a little bit of time in this section looking at the energy changes associated when we change states from solid to liquid or liquid to solid, for example. So I want to give you a couple of questions. First, evaporation. Not technically a phase change, but it is the spontaneous change of a liquid to a gas that occurs at the surface of a liquid due to the kinetic energy of the particles. Is the process of evaporation endothermic or exothermic? The answer is that evaporation is endothermic. You put energy in in order for water to turn into a gas. Another way to think about it is that when a liquid evaporates, it's the fastest moving particles that are most likely to leave, the particles with the greatest kinetic energy. And so as those particles leave, the liquid actually cools down a little bit. This is the whole purpose of sweating. Sweating is done as a cooling mechanism, not the process of sweating itself, but the evaporation of the water from your skin. Because evaporation is an endothermic process, it takes heat from your skin as the water evaporates. This is why it's easier to cool yourself in a dry climate than it is in a humid climate. When the air is really dry, the water on your skin evaporates very readily. When the air is really damp, it's harder for the water on your skin to leave your body. Therefore, your body is better at cooling itself the drier the air is. Well, if the process of evaporation is endothermic, what about boiling? Well, generally, we think of the word of endothermic meaning cool. The word endothermic means that you're putting energy into the system. And think about how you generally boil a pot of water. You put it on a stove so that the energy from the stove can go into the water. So yes, boiling water is generally considered to be hot, but the process is that you're putting energy into the system. It's endothermic. Then what about freezing? The inside of your freezer is really cold. Doesn't that mean it's endothermic? No. The reason that your freezer is cold is because it's taking the heat away from whatever it is it's trying to freeze. The freezing process releases heat, it's exothermic, and that heat goes into the surrounding air of your freezer and eventually out the cooling coils in the back of your freezer. If you've ever touched those, you realize how much heat is coming out of your freezer. The energy associated with these phase changes have names. Heat of vaporization is the heat of the boiling process. It can also be the heat of the condensing process, depending on whether you're adding heat or removing heat. For water, the heat of vaporization is 40.7 kilojoules per mole. Positive 40.7 kilojoules per mole if you are boiling water. Remember, boiling is endothermic. Negative 40.7 kilojoules per mole if water is condensing. The heat of fusion for water is the energy associated with either melting or freezing. And this value is 6.02 kilojoules per mole. Positive 6.02 kilojoules per mole if you're melting water, that's endothermic. And negative 6.02 kilojoules per mole if you are freezing water, again, that's exothermic. And it shouldn't be a surprise that the heat of vaporization is a larger value than the heat of fusion. To melt a solid, you have to separate some of the intermolecular forces that are holding the particles together so that the particles can start sliding around. To boil a liquid, however, you have to break all of the intermolecular forces and separate the particles far, far from each other so that they can become a gas. It's much harder to turn a liquid to a gas than it is to take a solid and turn it into a liquid. All right, let's practice with these. Here are some values for water. The specific heats of the various phases of water, the heat of fusion and the heat of vaporization that we just saw. So my first question is, how much energy is required to boil 50 grams of water? We can assume normal atmospheric conditions one atmosphere, and we can assume that the water is at 100 degrees Celsius already. Now I say normal atmospheric conditions because you can actually affect the boiling point of water by changing the pressure. If you lower the surrounding pressure, it's easier for the water to boil, and if you raise the surrounding pressure, it's harder for the water to boil. But here we can assume one atmosphere of pressure. So if I'm dealing with the boiling process, I have to focus in on the heat of vaporization. Now the heat of vaporization is an enthalpy change. We could say it's the delta H of vaporization. And like all of our enthalpy changes, it's expressed in kilojoules per mole. Now boiling's endothermic, so I'm going to use the positive value 40.7 kilojoules per mole, which means that we have to be in moles if we're going to use this value. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 50 grams of water and convert to moles. So 50 grams of water is equivalent to 2.77 moles of water. 
But then all I have to do is multiply my 40.7 kilojoules per mole times the 2.77 moles. My moles cancel out and I get an answer of 113 kilojoules of energy. So if we're at 100 degrees Celsius under normal atmospheric conditions, it takes 113 kilojoules of energy to boil 50 grams of water.